Okay, and it's uh, Comp 1011. It's Advanced Object-Oriented Programming. Um, it's Week 2, Lesson 2, Part 3. And we're going to do a little bit of testing now. Let's test our knowledge. So uh, here's the first one. I'm going to put this live right now. The first one says this. Um, give me a second while it disappears. Which of the following statements is false? A. A subclass is often larger than its superclass. B. A superclass object is a subclass object. Okay. C. The class following the extends keyword in a class declaration is the direct superclass of the class being declared. And D. Java uses interfaces to provide the benefits of multiple inheritance. Which one is false? Answer away. Go ahead. Answer away. Join uh, learn, uh, text learn to 37607, right? And once you join, you can press A, B, C, or D, or you can go online at pollev.com forward slash learn. Go. Which one is false? Which one is false? Yeah. Subclass is often larger than a superclass. Which one is false? False. This is one of these questions that are going to be on your tests, right? So when you see it, So we got 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 people. And so far we've got 8 responses. We've got 10 more people to respond. Come on, guys. Put well, your response in. I want to see it. Two seconds. Okay, that's good enough. Um, some a couple of people haven't voted. So if you haven't voted, you get to vote on the next one. Um, it's actually B. Um, yeah, because and this is why this so everyone got this one wrong, and this is what we have to focus on. So why is that? What do they mean by that? A subclass is often larger than a superclass. That's true, actually. So that's not a false statement. It's often larger than a superclass because usually I make a subclass to extend the superclass, which means I'm going to add stuff to it. Oh, so so that's that's not object. false. That's true. Right? A superclass object is never is not always a subclass object, but a subclass object is always a superclass. Always, right? B, uh, sorry, C. The follow, the class following the extends keyword in a class declaration is the direct superclass of the class being declared. That's not false. That's absolutely true, because. Um, I, when, I, when I say, uh, let's go back to our examples here, uh, player, right, or in this, case, in this case, villain extends hero. Hero is the direct superclass of villain. And so this is not true. This is, this is not false either. This is, a, this is true, this one, C, right? And here's D. Java uses interfaces to provide the benefits of multiple inheritance. And that's true, right? And we're, we haven't talked interfaces yet, but we will. Um, so... Here's the uh, here here are these two items right so B is the one superclass object is a subclass object they can't be both in this particular in this particular case it's the most wrong one and this is why I don't like multiple choice questions because you look at them and you go well it can't be A because the subclass is often larger it can't be C because that's true and it can't be D so it's got to be B that's how you would do this one right if you ever see this one on a test you know the answer okay let's go to the next one. Uh, so I kind of like it, and I don't like uh, multiple choice. This is the reason why I don't like it. Okay, here we go. Uh, an advantage of inheritance is that A, all methods can be inherited. B, all instance variables can be uniformly accessed by subclasses and superclasses. C, objects of subclass can be treated like objects of their superclass. And D, none of the above.
Isn't that interesting? So I think this is a hard question myself, right? When you look at it, you're like, hmm, which one is right? So an advantage is that A, all methods can be inherited. B, all, all instance variables can be uniformly accessed by subclass and superclasses. Objects of subclass can be treated like objects of the superclass. And none of the above. We're struggling. We're like between like uh, C and D, right? <laughs> it's interesting. We got a widespread here. All right, so let's let's talk about this. Let's stop it now. That was the last one. Okay, so uh, an advantage of inheritance is that all methods can be inherited. Can all methods be inherited? No. All right. The only thing that, you know, if you think about it, even the super method, the super class, sorry, the constructor method, is that automatically inherited? Why isn't it? Why isn't the super why isn't this, this, the constructor automatically inherited? It's private. It's public. All constructors are pu public, right? Oh, yeah, I guess so. But the reason why it's not done and we have to call the super constructor, like we just did a bunch of times, is because we may or may not want to, right? So if we always call it, that means this villain class, as an example, is always going to do whatever the hero class does. But we want, maybe we want it to do it, and maybe we don't. We can choose to or not, right? So in this case, the words that I don't like are can, which is like may, right? Which I don't like, right? Um, second one is, so this, I don't like this one. All instance variables can be uniformly accessed by subclasses and superclasses. That's not right. We just proved that. Remember, we use protected. We have to use protected. Not all instance variables, only the ones that have protected as their access modifier. Right? So that's wrong. Here's the next one. Objects of a subclass of a subclass can be treated like objects of their superclass. Yes. Because, because, right? The superclass, if I create a villain, sorry, if I create a villain, he still has all the properties of the hero. Right? And so therefore. If I'm testing to see if he's got the same properties, that's correct, right? So that's a yes. None of the above obviously is not correct because then I would assume that C is not correct, right? So that can't be it. Make sense? Let's kind of let's continue. When a subclass constructor calls its superclass constructor, what happens if the sub superclass's constructor does not assign a value to an instance variable? So you're calling the Superclasses constructor, right? And it doesn't assign a, a value. So the very the instance variable does not have a value. I have to specify this for this one. A, a syntax error occurs. B, a compile time error occurs. C, a runtime error occurs. Or D, the program compiles and runs because the instance variable are in, instantiated to their default values. These are tricky questions, right? This one is not so bad. This one is kind of clear. If you think through it, right, this one isn't as bad. Thirteen and four, seventeen. We have one more person. There we go. All right, let's take this up. A syntax error occurs. A syntax error can't occur because it's not a syntax problem, right? Syntax means something's wrong with the way we've built our command, right? In this particular case, there's nothing wrong with the way we've built our command because it says when a subclass constructor calls a super constructor, so I'm, I'm making the super call, like we said, right? What happens if the superclass's constructor does not assign a value to an ins instance variable? 
An instance variable is a variable that says this in front of it. That's why I keep putting this, 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 this. The ones we, we kind of uh, created up to the top, right? So that is wrong. A is wrong. B, a compile time error occurs. Well, that's wrong because there's no compile time error if there's no instance error. If the, because it's not an error to not, uh, to not assign a value automatically. You don't have to assign a value to an instance variable. There's nothing that says, there's no rules that say you have to assign a value to an instance variable. You can leave them all their default values, which could be nil. Right? And C, a runtime error occurs. So all the errors are the, this is that's the way it's easy to say it's D. Right? So the program compiles and runs because the instance variables are in, initialized to their default values. And the default values could be null or zero. Right? You don't know. You don't have to assign them in the in the super uh, in the constructor. Is that clear as much for you guys? It's not necessary, it's not it's not required. You could, but it's not required. And that's the thing you have to know. Okay, and let's go to the next. I think there's one more. I might have one more. Here's the last one, and then we'll, we'll break for this one. Using the protected keyword also gives a member A, public access, B, package access, C, private access, D, block scope. This is another tricky question. It's a silly question, and I don't like the way it's worded, right? But I want you to think about what it's saying very carefully. Does it mean member as in like a member of the protected? Using the protected keyword also gives the member that's that's uh, uh, protected, right? The member, a member. At public access, package access, private access, or block scope. What does it give the member? If I use a protected keyword, what does it give that member that I'm giving the protected keyword to? When I use protected, that access modifier, what does it allow me to do? Right? It also, not only does it allow me to do certain things, but also gives all other kind of access. You don't know? Matt, what are you thinking? Did you answer? Yes. I got seven and four is eleven and three is fourteen. I got four more. Come on, guys, four more people. Don't be afraid. Just answer. <laughs> You're not getting rated on this right now. This is a safe environment. Sixteen. I got two more people. Come on. Okay, that's enough. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, that's good. Okay, so let's take this up. So it's definitely not public access, right? Yeah. Giving a member protected, a, a, pr, giving a member protected doesn't give him, doesn't make him public, right? It's not private because private means that um, he's not going to have uh, they're, they're only going to have access to the class stuff itself, the instance variables. If the, if you give this, when you say gives a member protected keyword, when you add it on to like a member like an instance variable, right? It doesn't give him private access because that's exactly what it's not doing. So that's not right. So public and private are wrong, right? Block scope, I like the idea of block scope, but it has nothing to do with block scope because it's, it's, it's available to everything, right? So package access is the best answer. And remember what a package is. A package is a folder, right? So if I have, if I create a package, right? Um, and I right now my package is a default package. Anything inside that package that, that, that has, if, if it's uh, uh, with a protected keyword that's a subclass of the superclass that has the protected keyword has access to that member. It's a package. package. Yes. It's funny and it's an ugly way of, of uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't like the way these are worded, but you're going to see this stuff, unfortunately. right? And it, they're tricky because you're looking at them, what, is the, what do you mean by a private, private member? What is a member anyway? Are you talking about the... Um, uh, it could be, by the way, a member could be what? A method, right? Or it could be a property or a field, whatever you want to call it, right? Both members, there's both, both different member types. Okay, so of these questions? No. That's enough, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. It's stressing you out now. It's supposed to stress you out. It's supposed to stress you out a little bit. But it's stressing you out in a good way, not in a bad way. Okay, so we've talked about we've talked about this this stuff, and 
Okay, what about, have you, ever, you guys ever heard about, uh, you know, a, uh, an interface? So we're talking about inheritance, right? And I have an interface. Sometimes what we do is, and this is the thing, is interfaces exist with, about, uh, within all languages. They exist for JavaScript. We're going we're gonna to see that. They exist for um, C, C++, for Java, for C Sharp. What is, have you ever heard what an interface is, first of all? Because right? you're going to hear this word interface over and over again. What it does is it's almost like a blueprint. An interface is never really, it's not instantiated, right? But it forces me, it forces a type of way of, of uh, almost like a structure on a particular class. Like let's say, for example, I said that all heroes and villains and everything that's derived from the hero class has to implement, has to implement an interface um, that may, uh, ensures that, um, uh, that the villain always has a particular, uh, uh, or, or hero, the entity, has to have a method or a property. I can say that. So it's a, it's a restriction, almost like. So everything that inherits from then from the, um, uh, the hero class has to override, as an example, these two methods. That's, a, that's almost like I'm forcing it to happen, right? That's the type of interface I'm talking about. It, it creates almost structure around my blueprint. Okay. And of course, if I had my... Give me a second while I look at that slide so I can fix it. <laughs> I'm going to pause the movie while I do that so I don't waste anyone's time. And I'll give you guys a few seconds to uh, play your game.